Welcome back guys, I'm going to be assuming that you've already seen part 1 where I covered the Turk team and Civ bonuses. This video is going to be looking at the Turk unique unit in tech, expansion changes, and the tech tree. The Turk unique unit is the Janissary. Just to get it out of the way, it seems awfully similar to the Hand Cannoneer, but costs 15 food and 5 gold more, along with a huge upgrade cost. A couple of side notes about them is their armor is upgraded by archer armor and they do pierce damage, same as the hand cannoneer. Now looking at the stats before and after elite for the Janissary, there's a couple of hidden things here that we don't see. The first is that technically they have 50% accuracy, but in practice it's about 60% at long range and 75% within a few tiles. They also have a 17 second creation time from a castle before conscription and just under 13 seconds after. The 8 range may also seem average, but it's pretty impressive in Castle Age, where most crossbows and mangonels will only have 7. Now to compare that to the Hand Cannoneer. The Hand Cannoneer is created in 27 seconds before conscription and 20 after, so it's significantly slower, though you can make it at an archery range. They have slightly more accuracy at 65%, which in practice is about 70% at maximum range, and 75-80% to when a bit closer. Their big advantage is the secret plus 10 damage versus infantry. Comparing their stats to the Janissary, we see they're identical in terms of attack and armor. The Elite Janissary though is statistically superior in every way to the Hand Cannoneer except in terms of accuracy. This is where the bonus versus infantry comes in though. If we're against infantry and adjust the Hand Cannoneer's attack to what it would be in that situation, we can really make the case for either one. In case you're wondering, they also have the same fire rate, though the Elite Janissary fires instantly when told to do so, and the regular Janissary has a slight delay, with the Hand Cannoneer having an even greater delay. Once they're all firing though, the rate is the same. They also all move at the same speed, so by mixing them together you won't have to worry about the group being slowed down by one of them. To try to categorize them just based on stats, the Elite Janissary looks like a higher HP, higher attack generalist, while the Hand Cannoneer is more of an infantry specialist. It's not so much that one is necessarily better than the other, and remember the Elite Janissary costs an extra 15 food and 5 gold per unit, plus has to be created at a castle, and there's also that little 850 food and 750 gold cost to upgrade it. On the other hand, the Janissary is available in Castle Age, so you might have already created some and want to stick with that same unit line rather than starting up hand cannoneers from scratch in Imperial Age. A castle drop with Janissaries is a relatively common tactic as skill levels improve, and you may feel like it's better to stick with a particular unit as your core rather than switching to another similar one in Imperial Age. It's hard to say just looking at stats whether the slight power increase of the Janissary is worth the bigger investment, since you could buy an extra 15 hand cannoneers for the gold cost of the elite upgrade alone, and you're also going to need 650 stone per castle you plan to create them from. I don't think we can settle this one with theory, I think we're going to need to see it in practice against a variety of units. Here we'll try both against a mixture of halberdiers and champions. As expected, hand cannoneers do much better in terms of damage output, killing infantry 75% faster than the base Janissaries and 30% faster than the elites. If we open the gates and throw them to the wolves so to speak, we can see the hand cannoneers are still relatively effective at combating infantry up close because of their high attack, and the elite Janissaries' greater HP didn't make up for their weaker attack in this particular test. Remember the Turk hand cannoneers are also beefier than usual because of the extra 9 HP. Against infantry, there's really no question in my mind the Hand Cannoneer is always the better choice, especially when we factor in cost effectiveness. Well, what about against Paladins? This one's a bit tougher for the Hand Cannons to chew on, and the differences between them were smaller, with the Elite Janissary coming out on top, cleaning them up 36% faster than the Hand Cannoneers, and 46% faster than the regular Janissaries. Note in this situation the Hand Cannoneers still performed second while costing fewer resources than the Janissaries though the difference was very small and no doubt due to the effect of the slightly better accuracy. Letting the Paladins fight back, the gunpowder units are promptly killed, but the Elite Janissaries managed to almost take out two Paladins, which isn't a bad job. I'd say it's a pretty big edge for the Elite Janissaries against Heavy Cavalry. Now what about against Skirmishers? Well we see a clear advantage of the Elite Janissary over the Elite Skirmisher, with the Hand Cannons and regular Janissaries losing. It makes sense, since they all take equal damage and get hit by the attack bonus from the Elite Skirmisher against Archers, but the Elite Janissary is dealing out 5 more damage per shot. Again, you are getting more effectiveness out of the Elite Janissary investment, 
and in this case, it's the difference between half your units left compared to few, if any, left. To me, the Elite Janissary is the clear winner against Skirmishers and worth the investment in that case. Skirmishers are still cost-effective-ish because they're not gold units, but you're not going to stop an incoming Elite Janissary army with Skirmishers alone. Against Arbalest, we see very similar results. I wouldn't say they're good against Archers, but without Elite Skirmishers or Onagers available to a Turk player, your options are a bit limited. Just for interest sake, if we match up 30 versus 30, the Elite Janissaries also dominate the Hand Cannoneers with about half their health left. To wrap up, I'd say Janissaries can absolutely be a Castle Age stepping stone to Elite Janissaries if you're feeling confident in your Eco's ability to handle the massive upgrade cost. We could discuss the better melee armor of the Elite Janissary too, but by the time they're taking melee damage, they're kind of dead anyway. Speaking of beating something to death, I think that's enough about the Janissary, and let's move on to the unique tech, Artillery. This tech gives plus 2 to your Bombard and Cannon unit ranges, and costs 450 stone and 500 gold, which is a pretty hefty price tag. On the other hand, plus 2 is a lot of range, and they don't have Siege Engineers, so Turk Bombard Cannons go from tied with a lot of civilizations for 12 range, up to outranging all enemy Bombard Cannons by at least 1, which is a big advantage in Bombard Cannon battles, or against Onagers and Trebuchets. With 14 range to the Trebuchet 16 or 17, it's going to be a bit easier to dodge Trebuchet shots and take them down, though I wouldn't try it against Japanese Trebuchets of course. The Bombard Tower range is also increased and gives them a final 13 range. Surprisingly, the Koreans plus 2 tower range doesn't apply to Bombard Towers, giving Turks the best Bombard Towers in the game once they're up, outranging everything except trebuchets and elite cannon galleons. One more argument against going all in with Janissaries and more than one castle is you'll have a tougher time covering the map and all those awesome towers. The Turk Elite Cannon Galleon is also a little silly with 17 range, outranging the Turk Trebuchet by 1. That's going to let you take coastal raiding in the end game to the next level. So overall it's a really nice unique technology I think, because it helps you defensively and offensively on land with extra tower and bombard cannon range. Keep in mind it's very expensive, taking up more valuable resources in the late game, but rest assured you're actually getting a lot more for the steep price. So that's the HD and Conqueror's unique techs, now let's check out the changes in the Forgotten Empires. You might think not too much is different because the tech tree is the same, but a few units got a boost in the expansions that the Turks benefit from, like the camels no longer taking bonus damage from buildings, and the scorpion projectile size increase. Like all the civilizations, they also got a second unique tech, and theirs gives cavalry archers plus 20 HP. Combined with the fact that cavalry archers are now 10 gold cheaper, being 40 wood and 60 gold instead of 70, this not only makes the cavalry archers more viable in general, but even gives Turks arguably the best heavy cavalry archers in the expansions. I used to be totally sold on the Huns having by far the best cavalry archers because of the cheaper cost, but that's been reduced to 20% cheaper in Imperial Age now instead of the original 30%. And the Huns are missing the last ring archer armor tech, so the Turks have 20 more HP and 2 more armor. We can see in an AI vs AI test with equal resources, the Turks win despite the huge advantage that 25% more Hun cavalry archers should be having. And with equal numbers, this wouldn't even be close. Huns will still feel the cavalry archer rush faster, of course, but with 20 extra HP in Castle Age, Turks could definitely hold their own once they got a few out. Mongols also have that 20% faster firing cavalry archer bonus, but they get steamrolled in equal numbers by Turks. If we include the elite Mangadai as a cavalry archer, it's still a bit better in equal numbers. Maybe that's because of their faster firing rate, or maybe they just have to be the exception. In most situations though, the Cavalry Archer is going to be a legitimate unit line in the expansions, and is going to be easy to mass from archery ranges. Of course, they're gold intensive, like the Hand Cannoneer, like the Janissary, the Bombard Cannon, the Bombard Tower, Heavy Camel, pretty much everything you'll be making except the Hazar is going to cost a lot of gold, and that 12,000 you start with around your immediate area is going to disappear relatively quickly. That probably goes for a lot of cavalry civilizations too though, and it's not really a unique problem for any civilization. Now we're going to move on to the tech tree, starting with the archers. All the techs are accounted for, but no arbalest or elite skirmisher, so you're missing a nice cheap counter to archers. As we just looked at, the cavalry archer is arguably the best of all the civilizations in the expansions with their complete upgrades and plus 20 HP. Plus, the hand cannoneer is also arguably one of the best in any version with the extra HP, faster creation time, and free chemistry. 
The archer options aren't that bad in Feudal and Castle Age despite the reputation, and the gold bonus will help a bit, so overall I'd say B+. Though that elite skirmisher makes it an F once gold runs out. Looking at the infantry, they are the only civilization without pikemen, which is pretty awkward and makes cavalry a difficult unit type to deal with cheaply. You pretty much have to go camels in that situation, which isn't ideal before the expansions because of all the extra damage they take from buildings, plus the gold cost. The champions themselves also don't get any direct or indirect bonuses, but on the other hand, as Turks, you'll rarely feel a need to use them in my experience, so it'll be very rare that you use infantry. It's a pretty clear C. Looking at the cavalry, they get all of the upgrades, bloodlines, and everything except Paladin, and only 8 out of 18 original civilizations got Paladin anyway. Plus, they have the heavy camel and some free light cavalry upgrades. You'll probably benefit from the light cavalry or hussars in almost every game, and keep those camels in mind against Paladin civilizations or if someone tries to exploit your lack of pikemen. Having camels gives Turks more cavalry flexibility than the average civilization, and their night rush is solid, with bloodlines and the gold bonus. Combined with the free upgrades to the light cavalry line, I'd give it an A-. If their gunpowder wasn't good, I think people would talk about their cavalry a lot more. Next up is Siege. First of all, there's no Onager, which is kind of awkward again, but Bombard Cannons are there with some extra range and everything else is available. The Siege Ram is an intriguing option that I don't see a lot, but would be a nice addition to pressure your opponent away from archers. Bombard Tower and Siege Ram push could be an interesting idea, and if you like heavy scorpions against archers, you will have those as an option. It's a B plus for me, though I could see an argument for higher, and it might just be because I personally like the Onager so much. Moving on to the navy, there's really everything you need here, and a bit of eco help along the way with the gold. Early game is a pretty average C+, even with the gold boost, but it's maybe a B plus in the late game because of all the water techs, plus the faster creation time and range for the cannon galleons. Moving on to the monks, I will include them this time because I think they're a good option against knights as an alternative to camels or spearmen. If you're not going for Janissaries in Castle Age and heading straight for Imperial Age, you'll obviously want a university, but consider a monastery instead of a castle to stay off stone for a bit longer. The monks will be a nice counter to knights, especially since you don't have pikemen, and the relics will help your late game a lot. The monks themselves are missing the plus 3 range and plus 50% regeneration speed, so they're a bit of a mediocre B, but it's still not a bad idea to use them. Taking a look now at their defenses, I'd say they're really good, except for missing the Siege Engineers, which their unique tech makes up for in the Bombard Cannons anyway. The Bombard Towers are also exceptional. I do tend to consider good trash to be mixed in with defenses, and that's where I have to say they're lagging behind. It would be an A looking at the buildings in the late game, but it's more of a B in practice with how much you're going to struggle to hold off an opponent if your gold is running low. Finishing out the tech tree with economy, it's a bit of a weird one because they're so dependent on gold for an army. The eco techs look decent and the gold boost is really nice for the early game until you transition into trade. So I'd give them a B for economy, also keeping in mind that they save a lot of resources through free and cheaper technologies. As a final wrap up, they're definitely a civilization that gets stronger as the game goes along. And I like the power spike when they hit a new age, especially in Imperial. And I've always found I get really good advance times with the Turks. One thing I found helpful in team games is to not get too town center crazy in Castle Age. And while having three or four town centers making villagers can be great down the road, it puts the brakes on your Imperial advance time. If you normally go for more, try sticking to one or two town centers, and you might be surprised how quickly you can hit Imperial Age. Even around 30 minutes for a newer player is certainly possible if you're not under a ton of pressure, as opposed to the more usual late 30s, maybe early 40s that you see most often. People with specific fast Imperial builds will obviously go up faster than that, sometimes in the early to mid 20s, but the economy you hit Imperial Age with suffers a lot from that, so there's a big trade-off there. Turks also get put down a lot because of their expensive armies, but the thing is, when your bombard cannons outrange everyone else's onagers and siege by so much, and your gunpowder units are all very high damage ranged units, it's possible to fight without losing a lot of gold units, especially with light cavalry as a damage sponge in the front. Before the very late game, or as long as both teams have safe trade routes going, you're going to get some really powerful units coming from a Turk player, often with more techs than their opponents in early Imperial Age. 
In terms of dealing with Turk players who castle drop you, Janissaries can be taken out with a couple of nice Mangonel shots if you're lucky enough to have a Siege Workshop on hand, but in general I found range units to be preferable to melee units, and even cavalry are going to get taken down by a decent group of Janissaries. Elite Skirmishers aren't a hard counter, but they're certainly cost effective. Overall, it's a powerful strategy and one to consider trying yourself. So those are my thoughts on the Turks. As always, take it easy guys, and I'll see you next time.